Unbelievable cave diving accident, Cheve Cave. Bill Stone did stop half a mile underground at the Mexican super cave Cheve, which is three miles from the cave's entrance. There was a plastic survey tape and a red and white pattern strung over the tiny shaft he had been climbing. Stone's headlamp shone as brightly on the white piece of paper that it almost hurt the eyes to look at it as it floated around in the pitch blackness of the cave. It was just before midnight on March 1st, 1991, a Friday, although that didn't matter much because it was always midnight in a cave. We hope you'll join us in this video as we discuss an incredible cave diving accident that occurred at Cheve Cave. But before that though, please make sure you subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. As opposed to wasting any time, let's get right in. Stone was a 6 foot 4 inch tall, 200 pound hard driver with a degree in structural engineering. Along with two other seasoned cavers, Matt Oliphant and Don Coons, he led an expedition to prove that Cheve was the deepest cave on Earth. After almost a week of continuous underground travel, his body was thin and his eyes were hollow. His cheeks were rough with scraggly stubble, and he resembled the common conception of Jesus in appearance. Super savers commonly spend three weeks or more exploring massive underground mazes, so a week underground wasn't particularly long. It had taken him and his three friends about a day to go halfway back to the surface from the cave's deepest known location, which was around 4,000 feet vertical and 7 miles from the entrance. The note and tape were strung up not far from Camp 2. Chris Yeager, a 25-year-old caver from Indiana, and Peter Haberland, an experienced cave explorer from New York, had entered the cave at around 1.30 p.m. that day. Yeager had only been caving for two years before venturing into Cheve. The more seasoned cavers in camp quickly began calling Heger the Kid shortly after he arrived. A veteran, elite cave explorer named Jim Smith sat Yeager down for a 30-minute lecture out of genuine concern for the younger man's safety. Smith advised Yeager not to enter the cave without a guide, to bring only a light day pack at first to learn the route and segments, and to get acclimated to the underground world before venturing into a long stay. They ignored all the warnings that were given. Jaeger set off on his maiden voyage with a pack weighing 55 pounds to stay for seven days. Soon, Jaeger started having issues. He had just been in the cave for three hours when he discovered that he had not attached his rappel rack to his climbing harness. An essential tool for serious cave exploration, the rappel rack is second only to lighting in terms of significance. Jaeger would have to stop working without his help. To try to get to the spot where he had fallen, Jaeger borrowed his friend's rack. It was like trying to find a needle in a thousand haystacks, given that a rappel rack is only approximately 18 inches in length, and Cheve Cave is nearly unimaginably enormous and complicated. To continue down with Haberland, Jaeger was quite fortunate to find his rack. They got confused and took 45 minutes to find their way back to the main road. After reaching the base, he unhooked his rack from the rope and backed backward to avoid any rocks that Jaeger might knock loose. Eager had to stop and switch to the rope that would take him to the bottom of the 23 meter drop after he reached the end of the rope that he had been using. After properly adjusting, he leaned back to begin his rappel and immediately knew something was wrong. The backward tilt he was doing was not stopped by the rope, but he continued moving like a chair that's been tipped over backward. His rappel rack, which was still connected to the rope, had become detached from his harness. Almost without thinking, he reached out and grabbed the hanging rope and rappel rack. He could have saved himself by clinging to the rope, the anchor bolted to the wall, or by performing a body rappel if he had been wearing no load or only a light day pack. Peter Haberlin had ducked for cover behind a boulder and missed seeing Jaeger land because falling pebbles may shatter and ricochet like missiles. Nothing alerted him to the problem until he heard the rushing air and the crushing impact of a long fall ending on solid rock. Haberlin hoped that Jaeger had dropped his bag and shouted out to him, but Jaeger did not respond. In a matter of seconds, Haberlin located Jaeger, laying next to the rope's foothold. He lay on his right side in water that was no more than three inches deep, with his face submerged and his arms outstretched as if he were looking for something. When Jaeger's body was on its side, his right foot pointed up because his leg had been shattered and turned grotesquely 90 degrees. Haberlin turned his face slightly to keep his lips and nose out of the water, although he was not breathing or have a pulse. After a 20-minute descent, Haberlin arrived at Camp 2 of the Cheve Expedition, where he met Peter Bostead and James Brown, two additional cave explorers. They returned to Yeager's post with a sleeping bag and medical supplies and left a note dangling from red and white survey tape. When they got there, they saw that his nose had bled a little, but otherwise he was the same. Without any luck, all three of them tried CPR. Chris Yeager had passed away. 
And that's it for today's video, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed our video, despite the sad content. We also hope that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you'll get more great videos from us. Thanks for watching.